Hey guys, Multiclass Gamer here. Welcome to Let's Play SpongeBob SquarePants Super Sponge Game Boy uh, Gabba. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep on calling it Gabba. So, anyways, um, yes, Climax Development, as they're officially called, developed Super Sponge for the PS1, but also on the side they were also developing a Game Boy Advance version for it. To, to go alongside with it. So yes, this is the only case, actually, as far as I know, in the entire... Well, actually, no, that, that's not exactly the case. But yeah, this is a rare case where the developer of the console version also made the Game Boy Advance version. Normally, different versions of the same game are made by different developers, but this is one of those rare cases where Climax developed both of them. And uh, this is also the first SpongeBob game on Game Boy Advance. And there's actually a lot of SpongeBob games in the Game Boy Advance, but this is the very first one. And, in all honesty, for the most part, it's just a scaled-down version of, the, of a PS1 game. But, we're going to get into the differences, which actually justify me doing an entirely separate Let's Play of this game. So, anyways, uh, first things first, uh, as you saw, um, the there was no intro cutscene. And also, you're going to notice that there is, instead, a password system here. We're going back to password system that we had in Legend of Lost Spatula. And that's because, well, uh, at least at this point, you can't... I guess they weren't able to save on Game Boy Advance cartridges or something like that. But either way, and it's also worth knowing that this came out three days after the PS1 version. So you can tell that they were developed, obviously, side by side. Okay, let's get into the game now. So, um, first thing I should mention is that, uh, for one thing, you have the exact same levels you had in the PS1 version. We're starting off with Jelly Fields just like we did in the PS1 version. However, even though the levels are the same, like the locations are the same, the actual layout of levels is completely different. And that's among many other differences we'll get into when, when we actually get into level. Ah! Here we are in Bikini Bottom, and today we will be fighting one of my favorite creature, SpongeBob SquarePants, on his adventures around Bikini Bottom. Today he is in search of the best birthday present ever for his best friend Patrick. The question is, how far will he go for his best friend? So as you can see, the dialogue is basically the same, but without voices. So I'm going to attempt to rec to emulate them myself and fail miserably, trust me. Oh no, not you again. Just keep the noise down. What do you want? It's my best friend Patrick's birthday, and a signed photo of his favorite superheroes would be the best thing ever. Well, we are a bit busy right now. No, no rest for superheroes. <laughs> well, I know that Murray Man might consider signing one for a superhero snack. Uh, 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 Cena butter, lettuce, jelly. I can't believe they forgot the tomatoes there. That totally ruins this port for me. This is not anything like the PS1 for. Okay, let's continue on. It's Sunday today, SpongeBob, and no Krusty Krab. Whilst I am busy here, why don't you use this net for jellyfishing? Use R button to collect up to 10 jellyfish. Use B button to launch them at enemies. You know, this could be the best day ever for me if you got as far away as possible. Uh, I don't think that's very wise, Squidward, to ask for that. You know, considering what I've been wishing you well. Anyways, here we are in the very first level of the game, Jelly Fields, once again. And those golden spatulas are back. No! Or is it? Well, guess what? They changed things up in this game. The golden spatulas? Yeah, those are no longer necessarily a collectible towards getting 100%. Also, yes, jellyfish actually hurt you in this game, so be careful with that. But anyways, golden spatulas. There are... A... I don't think it's a finite, but like there's basically there's golden spatulas in every single level, but in this game they don't count, count towards completion at all. In fact, those six clams levels in about in the PS1 version, they're not in this game at all. They're nowhere to be found. So in actuality, they're the only incentive you have to collect golden spatulas is extra lives. That's it. They're basically down to being coins from the SpongeBob. SpongeBob. 
the Mario games. Collect 50 of them and you get an extra life. That's the only purpose for golden spatches in this game. And also, you notice that there, is, there are hearts on the top right corner of the screen. That is my health. In this game, you can take multiple hits from enemies and still live. And for the most part, I believe most enemies will cause like 10 damage or something like that. Like 10, like you lose 10 health or something like that. But yeah, this game is a lot, I want to say a lot easier. There are some differences. I, I, I don't know if I want to call it like easier necessarily. It, well, it kind of is. Oh, I didn't know that. You can kill jellyfish too. Okay then. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you have, you also have the karate glove like all the time now. So if you don't have any jellyfish in your net, you'll just hit, you'll just use the B button to use your karate glove instead. So, yeah, it's, honestly, I want to say that this is a vast improvement over the PS1 version, but since I haven't completed the game, uh, beat this game yet, I don't want to say that it's better automatically. So we'll get, we'll figure that out at, at the end, I guess. But, um, I will say that it's not, just because... There are certain things about it that are easier. It doesn't make it necessarily overall easier. As you can see, see, I'm playing pretty horribly. Like, I keep on getting hit by stuff. And also, the jellyfish... The giant jellyfish will sometimes become invisible. There's obviously, you know, going to be hardware limitations with uh, scaling the game down onto a Game Boy Advance. So, you know, beyond the lack of uh, voice dialogue, there's also going to be um, other differences. Like, uh... I don't remember what I was trying to say before, but, uh... <clears throat> but yeah, basically, you, you, uh, I think you lose 10... Well, it's not necessarily 10 health with each, uh, enemy. It's, it, it varies, like, what with what you're hit with, but, uh... Yeah, you can heal yourself with food in this game instead of golden spatulas. Um, basically, there are Krabby Patties, which will restore all of your health. There are Salty Shakes, which I just picked up, which restores 50% of your health. And salty fries, which re refill 25%, and that's how health works in this game. And also, yep, same collectibles as the last game at the end of the stage. And for some reason, SpongeBob becomes really big at the end when he when he collects that item. All right, next up we have Sandy's Tree Dome. Hold on there, little square dude. If you want to defend yourself, use your chop. My tree dome is full of air. Splash the pool. Splash in the pools and soak up water to stop yourself from drying out. So yep, Sandy Street Dome is very similar to what it was in the last in the PS1 version. Although, interestingly enough, it's actually I find it to be bigger. Like, uh, but that's just the thing with the Game Boy Advance overall is that uh, to compensate for the smaller screen, the I guess the platforms and the levels themselves are bigger. But SpongeBob himself is much smaller, which I think was a good idea. You know, scaling down to a game with to a smaller screen, you kind of have to do things like that um, in order to make it make it less uh, cramped, I guess. I guess is the word. But yeah, we got to just like before, make our way to the top of us, uh, Sandy's tree dome, well, tree, I guess actually. And then from there, uh, go to. The, I don't know. However, the layout was in the in the PS1 version. It's very similar. Just the it just it feels bigger, I guess. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so yeah, the golden spatulas. You just collect 50 to get to get an extra life. That's it. That's all there is to them. No six clams levels to worry about at all. There's just so many. Ah. Okay, I'm probably gonna die here. Oh, not maybe not. But oh, okay. So yeah, some of the platforming is a little more difficult, so I will say I'm not gonna... That's one That's one place where I might struggle is with the platforming, because it's, uh... Oh my god, seriously, dude? This problem with jumping onto the smaller platforms, I think I had the same issue with in uh, Legend of Lost Spatula, but... Honestly, in this game, I can definitely say the jumping controls are much better than Legend of, Lo of the Lost Spatula. I can give it that. Oh god. There we go. Thank God I didn't have to jump all the way down to the bottom of the level to get that one. Okay. Oh, crap. So, also, the, uh... Yeah, I guess the butt bounce is still here, but it's, like, it's less... Oh, my God. Seriously? Ugh. I don't... I don't know. It'll take some time for me to get used to the jumping, I guess. Oh, God. Dude. Jeez. I came so close to dying way too many times already. 
Okay. Oh, come on. Ah! No matter how many times I fail at, at jumping this level, I can assure you, jumping is still better in this game than it was Legend of Lost Spatula. It, I just suck at it, trust me. Okay, so we still got the the acorns falling from above, but uh, I guess we got bounce here to get up higher. Oh, God. But at the same time, we're, oh, God, dude, dude, oh, my God. The crap. I like how the password for this level is climb. That's that's pretty clever. So yeah, since we don't have to worry about the six clams levels or getting all the golden spatulas or anything like that, basically the only thing you have to do to complete this game is just to beat it, to get to the very end. That's literally it. It's one of those types of games where there's no like completion, extra completion necessary. Okay, now if I can make this jump, that'd be great. All right, yay, progress. Okay. But, again, just because there's no completion extras in this game doesn't necessarily make it easier than the PS1 version. There's still going to be difficult platforming to do later on. Oh! You just make it to the end, like to the very top of the tree, that's all you have to do, okay. Alright, so just like with the PS1 version, we're going to be doing two levels per episode. Although, honestly, if you're really experienced at this game, you could beat it in 45 minutes. Like, not even joking. Like, that's how long the long plays are of this game. Um, which is literally half of the length of the PS1 version. So yeah, overall, we have a much shorter game ahead of us, but we'll still make it 10 episodes just so that I don't... Because I still gotta take my times on each of these levels. Because again, I will point out that I have not completed this game yet. I haven't completed the GBA version yet. Um, and even though I've I've completed... Well, completed... Beat the PS1 version. Um, these levels are still different, obviously. Like, they're the same levels, but the layouts are different, so I still want to give myself time in each episode to get through each level, because... Just because, you know, again, with all the differences I mentioned so far, it's still pretty... It can still give you a challenge, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And we'll be seeing how this version of Fishhooks Park and Downtown Bikini Bomb fare against the game, the PS1 version. Honestly, though, they don't really have, it doesn't really have that much to compete with. I'll just say that much, but anyways, see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, consider subscribing and supporting me on Patreon for special features. And also, um, and also if you like this video, consider watching my 10-year uh, anniversary revisit LPs, which is also going on alongside the SpongeBob LP marathon. And with all that, see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching.